We're not missing anyone, right? So five of us? Okay. So starting from the very beginning, this is the primary and the secondary for the drive or the drip. Okay, so these are the two pulleys. So and then all of it's covered in a housing here. So you can see this housing. Now, the way this works is that um, it's hooked up to the engine itself. So here it is, right? And so when the engine starts to rotate, the faster this rotates, the weight, the, the springs, or the weights in the springs, they start to fly out. So when these are initially, yeah, I'll take these out. Because it's, it's attached better. So when, when the engine's awkward, it sits like that inside. Mm -hmm. And so the second the engine starts to spin, it might stay like this, you know, spin like that. Um, but the faster it spins, these start to fly out. Mm -hmm. So it flowers out. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. And so that the second that starts to happen, it starts to lower. Oh, right. because the weights. And the way up. the way that lowers is these weights um, run along the wall of this housing. So you can see that there's three here, three little lines. And so when it sits here, this part doesn't move. It's not allowed to move. So when these push against this wall, it pushes it down altogether. So that it creates that whole like motion of opening here along this shaft. Uh, and so when that happens, um, then this this closes onto the bell. So as this uh, turns, the bell will get like squished and it creates friction. With that friction, it, it starts to lift the center, the center between the, the belts, right? So the, the bell itself has like a certain uh, it has a certain uh, distance from center to center here, right? And that that doesn't change um, at all, right? Because we're, we're assuming that the belt can't be stretched elastically. And so when this starts to squish, um, this center starts to, or the circumference of this starts to change. And because of that, this one has to match it. And so this is where this one starts to open. That's, that's how the, the primary essentially works. And so when it starts to slow down, these weights go back up, and then it, it opens back up, and it sits back in neutral. Right. That's how the, the primary works. Now, the secondary works similarly the same without the weight. So this is a secondary. This is a complete secondary. So you can see here inside the secondary, all it has is a major spring. So that's all it has inside. There's no there's no weight it's based on. So when this starts to belt starts to compress, mm -hmm. this starts to open. And when it opens, it initially sits probably something like this. Ah. Or close, I'm sorry, it's the other way around. So initially it starts closed. And then once the belt starts to uh, apply friction and change the, the center distances, then this portion, I can't do it anymore, opens. And then the belt rides on here. The, the part that makes the secondary interesting is that it has these ramps. Right? They're called helixes or ramps. Um, it's actually something that a lot of teams don't really know what to do about, mm -hmm. and we we personally don't know either. If you look, if you look here, you can tell that this one has a different size mm -hmm. as opposed to this one here. Mm -hmm. So this one has a smaller one. This has like a larger one, and then the ramp angles itself has like its own. Um, reason means why it exists, but we're not going to go into that. But these ramp angles run on these little um, plastic pieces, and so when it opens, it'll turn in and out like that. Yeah. So it runs on that. 
So that's essentially the general sense of how it works. Now I'm going to turn it on and we're going to see how it, all of that works together. So you guys probably want safety glasses. You guys don't have no. safety glasses already. Nope. No safety glasses for Can you hold this the gas tank? So I'm gonna fire it up and then I'll probably be yelling because it's gonna be a little loud. fast 
really, really fast for a tire to spin, right? Um, and so if we were to rev it to 3,800, which is our max, um, that tire would be spinning ridiculously fast. Um, so fast that it wouldn't be able to grab the ground and we would just be stuck. Um, so we use the CVT and the gearbox, and both of these are forms of reduction. And so it reduces that RPM to, to something that can, is more viable. And so at the end, it'll trans transmit more of speed into torque, and, and torque is, is more power. It's, um, see it as speed is like going really fast, and torque is for like pulling purposes. So like if you want to pull something. Mm. Cool. Um, you guys had a, you guys wanted to basically upgrade this to an ECVT. Correct. So, um, you said it will use a step motor, so how would that basically go around, or how would that change the setup of this? That's, a, that's good, okay. So, um, the ECVT um, is, would be this portion. Mm -hmm. this, this would be the portion that you would change the, the mm -hmm. primary. Since you saw how this reacts due to mm -hmm. this, right? So if, if you have control of this, then this will just follow whatever mm -hmm. you want, right? So that's why we, most CBT, ECBTs don't have this change, mm -hmm. right? Um, so this portion would change because if we were looking, if we were looking at this primary, and I open it, right? Mm -hmm. Just how uh, Ashley said, it works based off centripetal mm -hmm. like forces and stuff, and that's what makes it fly, right? Mm -hmm. But there are situations in, when we're driving that it, even though the CVT transmit the, the best power for it, mm -hmm. it doesn't, in certain situations, it's not, it doesn't do that case. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is going up hills mm -hmm. and, and turning. Mm -hmm. So um, in those cases, what we want is to be able to control this, how fast these are getting close, right? Okay. And so that's, right now we don't have any of that control. Mm -hmm. It's just, we just have to just hope and pray mm -hmm. in a way. Um, but with the ECBT, we would be able to, on this one, we'd be able to swap all this out, all these things out like this, mm -hmm. and then you would be able to maybe put rods or mm -hmm. some sort of linkage system here with a stepper motor holding it. Um, and then that stepper motor would be like, okay, open and close, open and close, mm -hmm. like that, right? But then those situations where it's like, maybe the turn or a hill climb mm -hmm. or something, then it would be like, okay, even though like, if we were to use the normal weights and stuff, mm -hmm. it might stop here, but okay. we want it maybe here. Okay. We don't have that control yet. But with the stepper motor, we can lock it in that place mm -hmm. and then go up the hill, right? Okay. So that would be a situation where the ECVT would. So it's kind of like implementing like a makeshift gear, basically like basically like, oh, right. I want to lock it in that place. Right, so, th so then they would change that infinite thing to mm -hmm. like a normal transmission. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Except with the benefit that you still have those like infinitely many gears. Mm -hmm. Right. Because then we can turn it off and it'll mm -hmm. just yeah. go right back to it. It will just go to back the... to that normal. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of like having the same thing but like adding more components to it. Right. Okay. And then so you use the RPMs that are being read off the sensors mm -hmm. and then you use that to determine how far you're going to be taking the post. So if your RPMs are too low, mm -hmm. then what is it, you squish it? If it's too low, it's, it's, uh, low. it's open. So if it's too like low, this. you open it, and if it's too high, then you squish it. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And so it's, it's all situational, and we're going to have to do a lot of testing to determine like, what is too low, what mm -hmm. is too high, right. how are those ratios affected. So that's um, part of the drivetrain portion of it. So you, you know, Chris is taking over the, or is Manny the, C, the ECPT portion of it. But for me, it goes to that portion where I was talking about the ramps, the ramp angles. I don't, I personally don't know how these affect. I mean, theoretically I've read papers and all this stuff, but I don't know how they like affect it on our view. So I need to test it. And,
this secondary is different from this secondary is different than that other second this secondary right and so these ramp angles affect it in the sense of um, what's the word uh yeah return so it'll be a uh, up shifting and down shifting so if you uh, if you imagine this being like perfectly flat and these little rubber parts have to, have to run on it like if it's really flat this thing's easy to go up and down something flat or side to side on something flat right as opposed to something that's really steep right if it's something really steep if it's really hard to go up it right and or and it's really easy to go down right so but since this is the secondary or the, the part that's closest to the tires um, if this opens and closes really fast then we lose power to the, to the tires so even though it's reacting to this it still has like to open physically mm -hmm. open and close if it was like an instantaneous open and close it wouldn't matter right and so that would the purpose is the purpose of using the, the ultrasonic is to see how fast I can open and close it or try not to even open and close it or be able to manipulate it and keeping it open without trying to close it or vice versa Would you guys want me to go into that? It, it starts to become more theoretical in the sense of like, I guess this is the drivetrain portion the of it. I mean, I felt like this was a good rough start. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have more questions and like more specifics on like exactly what this means, and like what the weights and how all that stuff, mm -hmm. we can go into that. I think that's more of a little bit more of a drivetrain kind of situation. Yeah, it might get too much. Into mechanical right. concepts, but that essentially <laughs> this is mechanically how it works. Mm -hmm. okay. So I guess in a in a broad sense, um, yeah, the ultrasonic sensor measures the upshifting and downshifting, and it's helping him understand mechanically how this works so that he can tune. Right. Mm -hmm. So the current setup with your all effect sensors and your the ultrasonic thing, mm -hmm. those that's going to help me tune for this year. Mm -hmm. okay. that's the, we have the ECVT, um, that's mostly just affecting the drive, but 